Shares of Nike hitting another all-time high today. This is the company held its annual shareholders meeting. Sarah Eisen's got all the details from the NYSC. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Melissa. It's been a winner all year long. So earlier today, Nike chairman and CEO Mark Parker addressed shareholders at the annual meeting. Parker touted Nike's strong results and the shareholder value that's been created. He was, though, asked about some of the workplace issues, made his most extensive public comments yet about the internal corporate culture scandal that, remember, led to the departure of 11 key executives in the past year, including the number two at the company and widely believed successor to Mr. Parker. Parker responded, saying he's grateful for the employees that spoke up. He says the most important job is making Nike the kind of place we all want it to be, saying the company is committed to creating an environment of inclusivity, diversity, and empowerment. He added that they're implementing new employee training and leadership development programs as they learn from the mistake. He was also asked about the controversial Colin Kaepernick ad campaign by a shareholder. Parker defended it, calling it an inspirational campaign and said that he was incredibly proud of it. Now, according to the latest data from Edison Trends, sales did jump online 27 percent after that campaign was released during the Labor Day weekend, but have since leveled out uh, around the growth rate that they were before the campaign. Investors have largely shrugged off both the internal changes and the noise around this campaign as the company has repeatedly put out strong results globally and has even proven that it made good on its promise to turn around the key market of North America. Shares of Nike up more than 36 percent so far this year, best performer in the Dow. Shareholders also rejected a proposal that would have required Nike to disclose more information about the company's political donations. That was the sixth time that was voted on. Remains opposed by the board. On Tuesday, the company does report earnings. So, Melissa, we will see how much of a direct impact all of this had on the bottom line. They clearly couldn't talk about the results as they were in quiet period ahead of that earnings on Tuesday. You know, it's just interesting, Sarah, there have been so many different research operations, companies out there releasing these sorts of data points about sales, but none of that has been confirmed by Nike. And do we have any sort of ideas to whether or not they've been accurate in the past? Not sure about that, but you're right. It hasn't just been the sort of online high frequency data like Edison Trends, which I mentioned. Canaccord just recently put out their own internal survey. We don't know exactly the accuracy, but I think it, it captures a similar theme. And that is that when it comes to the message that this was supposed to resonate for, the audience this was supposed to resonate for, younger consumers, buyers of Nike products, remember, they've got a huge constituency below the age of 45, that, that that did make an impact or it didn't at least have a negative impact, that a lot of the protests, the boycott Nikes, that was maybe from an older crowd, a lot of social media noise. But, but you're right. We're not going to see until they release results. And even then, that'll be early to see the results. Yeah. But I'm sure that executives will be asked about it on the conference call. All right, Sarah, thank you. Sarah Eisen joining us from the NYSC. Well, as Sarah mentioned, Nike is also the best performing Dow stock year to date, crushing its competition in the athletic wear space. So while Nike has soared, though, Foot Locker, Under Armour, Skechers, they've all plunged 10 percent or more in the last three months. So do you just keep buying Nike, Tim? Uh, to, you know, Nike to me, it's a name I'm long. They've been on as much of a tear in this last period. They're up 68% in the last, you know, nine months as they've been in the last decade. So for all those people that were counting these guys out, North America, Q4, you had an inflection point. China, for all the concerns around trade war, China's contributing 25% of revenue growth, about 18% of EBITDA growth. And I still think it's very well positioned in terms of women's growth, DTC. So uh, I love the story. Not cheap. And I think at this point, it's getting near that place where um, I don't necessarily sell my position. I would not be saying, hey, I think there's great value here. Yeah. Not long ago, I sold it. And, and for that reason, yeah. because it's not getting cheap. And, I, you know, it was a couple of dollars ago. But I, I got to tell you, with the Kaepernick thing, we talked about it that night on this air. We talked about the idea that it was a risk. And it was a risk that they wanted to take. And it's not the first risk nice taken Did you sell before the, the Kaepernick ad? Or did yes. that make no, you think no, twice? No, okay. before the Kaepernick yeah. ad. And I wasn't... Uh, you know, I don't think that was a reason to necessarily buy or sell, but I, I think there's still competition's going to be here with Adidas. But if I'm going to be in the athleisure space and the one name that wasn't up there is Lulu, 
I continue mm. to own Lulu. I see the growth in men's, which is outrageous. E-commerce was 50%. You, you, uh, you rocking some Lulu I in the gym? I rock a little bit That's of Lulu, my son and I yeah. both. And yeah. I got to tell you something. Yeah. I, I love I love their product, but I love what they're doing and the growth that they've got. Yeah, Karen, it, you were still in Foot Locker? I'm in Foot Locker. Yeah. Disappointing earnings. I mean, I think the stock is really, really cheap. Obviously, they are, they're not a brand. It's a distribution. And so that, that weighs on the multiple by a lot. But to me, it seems excessive here. And it does correlate with Nike, even though in the very near term it hasn't. Yeah, I would just add, so they had this meeting today. There's obviously been a lot of talk about Nike. The stock's made new highs. It's up 20% since they reported last quarter. So these guys talking about growth, you know, it, they're expected to grow earnings, uh, mid-teens, sales, high single digits, that sort of thing. You're paying 30 times. It is getting a little expensive. I'll just add one point, though. Since they guided in late June, we we're just talking about the dollar. 60% of their sales come from overseas. Tim just said 25% of their sales growth comes from China. So a weak dollar kind of gives them a little bit of a tailwind, at least as far as forward guidance, but I think, you know, if you could get this thing back towards the low 80s and set up for a move back to 100 towards the end of the year, that's the way to do it.